Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. You might have heard of the sales accelerator, which actually went into preview back in 2020. I actually wrote an article about it back in April of 2020, but since that time and since it went into GA, uh, there's been some updates and some enhancements to the sales accelerator. Now keep in mind, you do need a sales insights license in order to use the sales accelerator. But in this video, I want to go over some of the updated features, but I also want to show you what's been added as part of the 2021 release wave one. So let's just sit back, grab some popcorn and enjoy this video. So let's go ahead and navigate here to the sales insight settings because that's really where we can configure the sales accelerator, right? So you can see here now I have this button here under sales accelerator that says setup and then we have segments and segments are new and I'll talk about that in a second and then we'll have sequences as well. So. Um, there's a couple of changes. Uh, I did a video on the sales accelerator when it was in preview and I will drop that in the comments as well so that you can kind of see, uh, you know, how it's supposed to work and stuff like that, right? Like I said earlier, this is really a video about some of the, the new features that have been added to the sales accelerator. So I'm just going to click here on setup and when the screen loads you can see it's a little bit different than what it was when the preview was there which obviously right it, it always gets a little bit better after the preview so just wanted to show you here real quick you can um install sample data as you can see i already did that i do also have the ability to remove the sample data from here as well obviously and then you can see here, you can define your access. This was already there. Like I said, this whole layout of this setup area is a little bit different. So you can give people access by security role, just a specific security role, or you can say, hey, all security roles are gonna get access to that. Then if you click here on choose content and layout, you're gonna be able to choose your record types. And previously, only leads and opportunities were available, but now you can add some additional record types here as well. And this is that list of record types, right? Then when you add a record type, as you can see here, you can choose a form that you want to load right inside of the sales accelerator when you're accessing either in this case, a lead or an opportunity. And from here, and this is separate from the sales accelerator, but you can set up your lead scoring and your opportunity scoring by just clicking in, on any of those buttons. And this is just less clicks, right? If, if you scroll down here on the side, you can see on their predictive models that you have the ability to access and set up your lead scoring and your opportunity scoring from there as well. This just allows you to, to do it directly from within here. You don't have to set this up if you want to use a sales accelerator and also if you're using lead scoring and opportunity scoring you don't have to set up the sales accelerator or use it right so i just want to make sure that uh, that's clear then if you click on here you can see the automation of activity creations and as you can see you can go into sequences from here and then you can create those sequences. So you see on the side here, on the left-hand side, there is under segments and setup, there is our sec sequences. That's just a place where it's going to take you. And if you did install that sample data, you're gonna see that there's gonna be uh, some active sequences that are part of that sample data as well. And then, we can click here you can go to the setup for your integrated calls i wrote an article about the team's call preview as well again this is just 
additional an additional way to set this up right the same thing with conversation intelligence you don't have to set that up you don't have to use uh that those of features here but you can set that up directly from within here so just wanted to mention that so let's go into sequences first before i start talking about that new segments piece that's part of this so if again if you read my previous article about the sales accelerator or you saw the video then you already kind of know how this works so i actually created i think it's this guy over here no it's this guy this lead nurturing sequence and you can see here that there are some there's some additional functionality that we now have with sequences so for example what we can do what i'm doing over here i'm actually putting in in here a condition so i'm going to say hey do this or wait for this first before you take an action like that so let me show you what i'm talking about i'm i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to go back here and I'm going to create a new sequence. I'm just going to call this test and that's going to be leads. That's fine. And you can see here the different activity types that you have that you can use. So you can uh, click on email. And what that means is that if that email activity is created, then the user still has to actually click the button to send the email and that's kind of the difference between the email and the automated email and the automated email is new right i believe that was part of 2021 release wave one that's exactly what it is it is when that step is is next right is coming up or when it's active the system is automatically going to send that email. The user doesn't have to go in there and manually send that email. So that's kind of the difference. So you're gonna start with an activity, right? So let's say just email, and I'm going to say um, reach out after trade show or, or, or whatever, right? You can put a description in here that they will see. And then this is cool. You can actually add an email template. So let's just see here. This could be a lead reply, trade show visit. So email regarding the trade show they visited. I cannot spell visit. There you go. Right. So what's happening then is then this email template will load. And then what we can do then I'm going to save this step. And what I can do here is I can do a step, right? I can set a wait, wait time. So I'm going to say wait five days before you do the next step. But we now have conditions. So what we can do here is because the previous step was an email, I can do some email related conditions, right? So for example, I can wait until the email is opened or <clears throat> excuse me, until the recipient has replied or clicked a link, et cetera. So obviously you need to have email engagement uh, turned on, right? And configured for this. So let's just do an email open. And this is where now we're basically uh, saying, hey, you gotta wait so many days before you advance to the next step. So let's say I'm going to wait like two days before I'm going to go to the next step. And if the action is completed within that time limit, so if somebody opens that email prior to the two days of waiting, then I want to move to the new next step. So I'm going to say save, right? So I'm going to send an email. If that email is opened, I'm going to go here down this yes, yes path. And if it's not opened, I'm going to go down after two days to the no path, right? So then you can do another one. You're going to say, I'm going to send an automated email, right? And so you can go on and on like that. Um, the other condition that we have is for phone calls. So follow up call on email open. I'm going to save that. And then I can say my conditions for that is once the phone call is made or received. If I do made, uh, you can see here, there's no time in between or anything like that, right? I'm just saying, was the call made? Yes. If it, if the status was a made, if it was set to that other status you just saw, 
then we're going to go down the no path. But you can see that it's you can like keep going with this and, and really kind of build out that sequence flow in here. So that's kind of the first thing uh, that I wanted to show you guys. Now let's talk a little bit about segments. So once you created those sequences, then we had to basically go in here and we had to connect our, our leads. And, and you could view the leads that were connected to that sequence in here as well. I believe you could also go to the lead form and you can connect it to a sequence from there. But now that we have segments, this can be automated. So let me explain a little bit what segments are. So segments kind of allow the system to group records together, which then can be added to a sequence. So you can group these records by creating a segment query to filter out records. And it's, it's very much, it's kind of like an advanced find. The difference though with an advanced find query and when you're using a query with segments is that the segment query will not add existing records that meet that query, query criteria to the segment. So if your segment is to include like um, open leads that have a lead source of website, any of the existing open leads in the system that have that lead source value of website are not going to automatically be added to your segment, right? Any new records or updated records that meet that criteria will be added to that segment. So if you create the segment first, and after that you create a new lead or you update an existing lead and, and you set that lead source value to website, then those records are going to be added to the segment. Now, it's also important to understand that if at some point those records do not meet the criteria anymore, so let's say, right, we had that new lead, uh, we created that new lead and we set that lead source to website, now we're going to change that lead source to a different value, it's not gonna take that lead out of that segment. It's gonna stay in there. So those I think are very important things that you kinda wanna understand about segments. Okay, so now let's take a look at segments, right? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in here. You can see that I already have some segments in here also the example that I just had with web lead. So let's create a new segment. I'm gonna say, uh, this is my test segment. And we're gonna do lead records. Let's go ahead and click on next. And this is where you can build your query, right? I can say, um, I'm gonna do, I only want open leads, obviously. So I'm going to say status equals open. And I'm going to say lead source, oops, lead source. Where is it? This guy conference. There you go. Let's just do the lead source is a conference. Okay. So I can simulate the results to see what I have in my system. I only have one in my system, but if I would have more, it, it doesn't matter whatever the results are. These are not going to be automatically added to my segment. And you'll see that in a second. So I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to say, I'm going to save this. Right. And then there you go. Let's give it a second here. And then I can activate that segment. So if you click here on details, you can see that I don't have any members in this segment yet. And those would be, right, the leads that would meet the criteria. So let me actually go in here and, and create a new lead or update a lead. Let me actually, oops, let me go back here. I'm just going to create a new lead. Lead. I'm going to say test lead for segments. I'm going to be John Doe. And the lead source is going to be conference. Here we go. 
I'm going to save and close that lead. And there is my lead. All right, so if I go back here now to my segments, let me just refresh that real quick. You can see that John Doe, that the lead that I just created, have has been added to my segment. Now, the other thing that's important to understand, and you should see that when I go click on Builder, is that when a lead is added to a segment, then right, it can be added to a different segment or, or seller or sequence. So it's it says it right here on on the screen. Now let's now talk about the next step now since we activated this segment now we can actually connect it to a sequence so let's go back in here and i have my test sequence in here let's very quickly add something uh, i'm gonna put in website visit email i'm gonna save this i'm gonna do a wait condition for two days. I'm going to save it. I'm going to do a phone call, a call. I'm going to save it. Okay, let's now just go ahead and save that, activate that, and then associate our segment with that. We're going to go to connected leads. As you can see, I have no connected leads here. I can connect my segment, my test segment that had uh, Joe, John Doe in it, right? So we can see the members of that segment. Now I'm going to connect to it. And all of the members of that segment that were added to the segment segment prior to connecting it to the sequence, they will not be added here. You can still do that manually though. But if again, if you have any segment members that were added prior to connecting it, to this sequence, they will not be added. Now, new leads that are gonna be added to the segment will be added here. So let me show you that. Let me create another lead. This is gonna be another lead. This is gonna be a conference. And then we're gonna set Jane Doe. And I'm gonna save and close. There we go. Let's just go ahead and refresh. There we go. Sequences, test sequence. And there you go. You can see that Jane Doe was automatically added first to the segments. And then because the segment is connected to the sequence, then to the sequence as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Have a great week, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Stay safe.